بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم Okay, in the previous session I talked about data mining and the importance of data mining Data mining is an, a most important field in artificial intelligence and uh, it talks about uh, ex extracting knowledge from data um, uh, we uh, we have many data and we want to extract some knowledge to help us do uh, intelligent tasks okay I said that uh, one of the most important uh, fields in data mining is classification and we talked about classification in the previous session and uh, we said that uh, classification is a type of data mining that we have some data that uh, the data has two parts inputs and output and uh, we talked about an is a simple example about uh, classifying fruits and we said in this in this example the inputs are color and height and the output is the type of fruit <coughs> Uh, and uh, in the uh, data that we have it has <coughs> the inputs uh, are the features they called uh, they are called feature and most of the time they are numbers and the outputs uh, in this example for example it was the type of fruit and the most important thing about the output is that in classification the output is discrete the output is discrete uh, for example here we have the apple and pear so uh, we have two outputs uh, minus one and plus one these are the outputs that we have uh, and uh, we said I said we have some training data the training data is the data that uh, we use for learning and it's very important for example if we have 1000 data we select 70 percent of the data randomly and we use that data for uh, learning I will talk about learning in the next slides and the test data is the data that we use to uh, to evaluate what we have learned okay we have learned something using the training data and then using the test data we want to see how good have we learned so this is the test data um, for example uh, from the uh, data that we have we select 70% uh, randomly for training and 30% uh, for test okay okay um, so I s uh, I said that we have some methods for selecting uh, training and test data uh, one of the important methods uh, was KFOL I'm, I'm not sure I talked about it in your class uh, but KFOL is a method for uh, selecting training and testing data randomly in this method we uh, divide the data into K parts and then we uh, use uh, in in a in a loop we have a loop and in the loop we select one part for uh, testing and the other part for training for example if, if k is 5 we select four parts for training and one part for testing and this is a, a, a repeated uh, as so we select all of the data for test and training okay the next issue is noise and, and noise is something that we have in data noise is a, a wrong data okay and it, it and it may occur uh, with different reasons okay so the, uh, the important thing is that an, a noise is a data that is wrong but we don't know which data is a noise okay um, uh, uh, sometimes we could uh, if if 
uh, we have access to the data maybe we could find uh, which data was the noise but uh, uh, most of the time we can't and and we don't know which data is the noise for example for example in the fruit example okay in the fruit example if uh, I said that the inputs and output are the two parts in, in the data and uh, uh, we may have noise in the input and output okay uh, in the input if we have noise it means that uh, for example one of the features of data the value is wrong for example the height of the uh, fruit is a wrong value or <coughs> the output uh, and, uh, may be wrong the output as I said uh, it is it is being assigned uh, by a human so sometimes maybe the person who is assigning uh, the outputs to the data he is um, uh, made a mistake and uh, he has thought it, it was an apple but it was a pear okay so uh, in the first uh, situation the I said that the inputs are uh, measured using machines so the machine um, uh, made the error and in the second situation the person who, I who is assigning the output to, uh, to the data he made a mistake so this mistake causes to have some noise in the data and uh, classification is a type of supervised learning okay this is very important uh, supervised learning is a type of learning in machine learning in which the data that we have it has some inputs and output and um, we uh, use the output for uh, learning and uh, so the main uh, feature the main uh, uh, point about uh, supervised learning is that uh, we have a data that has inputs and output and we use the output in the learning process so this is supervised learning uh, if you want to uh, if you want to have an example I think I talked about it in class about the example about the math teacher I talked about it okay and uh, the next issue is what do we uh, want to learn what do we want to learn this is very important in classification we uh, 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 we want to learn the relation between the inputs and output okay so we want to find the relation between the inputs and output that's what we want to do in classification for example in the in the example about fruits we want to say uh, what is the relation between the height and color of the fruit with the type of the fruit the type of the fruit is the output and the color and height is the inputs so this is what we want to learn the relation between inputs and output for example uh, if we have some data about cars uh, and this data is two classes okay okay so we have some data about cars and this data is two classes family cars and uh, non family cars these are the classes of data the outputs some cars are family cars and and the others are non-family cars and the inputs are the price and engine power of the car so what is the relation between the inputs and output what is the relation between these two okay if you look at this diagram you see that uh, we have the price uh, we have the price here okay let me bring uh, uh, some pencil or, uh, okay 
for example, if you have a price here, okay, this is the price, and uh, okay, so this is the price, okay, this is one of the inputs, price, and uh, the second input is what the engine power. second input is the engine power okay the inputs are the price and engine power and uh, the output is the car and the, the family car and the non-family car okay so these are the inputs that we have uh, and and the output is uh, family car and non-family car okay okay the output you see here the outputs uh, they are some circles that inside the circle there is a, a plus sign or minus sign the plus sign are the family cars inside this rectangle which is gray it's gray rectangle and the uh, the circles with the minus sign these are the non-family cars okay so we have the family cars and the non-family cars here Okay. Okay, now we want to say what is the relation between the inputs and output. The inputs are price and engine power of the car and the output is the type of the car. What is the relation? Okay, you see here that we have a condition. It says that price between P1 and P2, P1, P2 and engine power between E1, E2, you see it in the figure E1, E2, P1, P2. Uh, okay, if we if we um, have this, okay, let me put it here. We have a pen. Okay, this is P1, P2, E1, E2. Okay, this condition price between P1 and P2 and engine power between E1 and E2. It says that if we have this condition then it means that the car is inside this rectangle, okay? This rectangle is P1, P2, E1, E2, okay? So this condition says if this condition is true uh, we have a family car this is a family car for example okay the inside it is a plus sign and if this condition is not true we have a non-family car okay so using this condition with this condition uh, we have a relation between the inputs and output okay we have a relation between inputs and output Okay, so uh, in this simple example, the relation between the inputs and output are is uh, established using a if condition. Okay, so we have a if condition that is relating the inputs to the output. Okay, so uh, the inputs and outputs are, are being related using an if condition. Okay, uh, so this, uh, this if condition is very important. Okay, so uh, 
in this example uh, uh, the learning is finding this relation okay this this relation it has a format as you see it here in this example the format of the relation between the inputs and output is a is an if condition a if condition that has some condition inside it okay the format of the relation is like this but uh, in other examples we may have more complex uh, learning formats okay so the format of the relation is very important here it is a if condition Uh, so, um, in this if condition, you see that uh, we have some unknown values. Okay, we have some unknown values. What are the unknown values? In this if condition, what are the values that should be uh, uh, should be set uh, uh, when we want to use this condition? Okay, the unknown values are P1, P2, E1, E2. If we have these four values, then uh, we could give uh, the data about the car, the price, and the engine power, give it to this rule, and this rule tells us that uh, this car is a family car or not. Okay, so in every uh, in every learning task uh, there are two uh, main issues the first issue is uh, the format of uh, the relation between the inputs and outputs here the format is a if condition and the second issue is the parameters or the unknown values of the uh, this uh, format okay we call it a, a learning model I will talk about it in the next slide with uh, in, the, in the next slides with more detail but in this simple example you see that uh, we the in uh, the, uh, the relation between the inputs and output are based on an if condition and uh, um, this if condition it has some unknown values the parameters uh, which should be set uh, which should be set uh, in the learning process okay okay as I said we have a learning model Okay, you see that in the previous slide, I, s I said that the learning model is an if condition. Okay, uh, so um, this learning model could be could have many different uh, formats. One of the formats is uh, the linear format the linear format uh, is a format for the relation between inputs and outputs uh, one other relation is the quadratic one other is probabilistic okay all of these are the format of relation between inputs and outputs each of these uh, learning models or formats they have some unknown values like the if condition I said it has some unknown values in every learning model we have some unknown values okay so uh, we should set these unknown values we should set these unknown values and these unknown values are set in the training phase okay this the parameters of the learning model 
they are set in the training phase okay so the training phase uh, uh, one of the goals of the training phase is setting the unknown values is setting the unknown values okay so uh, this is about the learning model and in the learning model uh, we have some unknown values which are set in the training process and uh, we will talk about it uh, with more detail in the next slides okay uh, in this uh, slide you see that uh, we have a uh, specific data we have a, a specific data um, and we have uh, different learning models okay uh, we have different learning models okay here the first figure here it is a linear a linear learning model okay the second one is a quadratic learning model and the third one is a nonlinear learning model okay uh, these are the uh, learning models that we have here and uh, you see that the data is the same but we could use different learning models okay we could use different learning models Uh, so the question is that how do we select the learning model how could we select it based on what do we select the learning model okay so on a data we could use different learning models which one should we choose this is a very important question about uh, selecting the correct learning model which model should we choose okay um, uh, what is the answer the answer to this question uh, is the, Im the most important uh, criteria or the most important uh, uh, measurement that we that is important for us for selecting a learning model is uh, the is is called the generalization generalization okay now what is generalization okay so we select a model based on generalization okay uh, uh, you may ask that what are these learning models the answer is each of these learning models they belong to a classifier each of them represent a classifier as you see in the example we had about the if condition the if condition is a learning model okay the if condition is a learning model and uh, uh, each classifier it has a learning model so each of these uh, learning models uh, represent a classifier and uh, they are a classifier so we want to see that if we if we have a data which classifier or which learning model should we choose <coughs> okay the answer is that <coughs> the best uh, learning model is uh, the model uh, that it has better generalization <coughs> better generalization that's the most important criteria for selecting the learning model and and 
what is generalization? Generalization is the ability of learner to predict the test data. As I said, we have some training data and some test data. Okay, we have some training data and some test data. Each classifier is trained or learned using the training data. And the test data is could be used to evaluate. It could be used to say uh, how much is this classifier uh, how um, uh, how much is the generalization of this classifier General, uh, ge the generalization the generalization means the error or the accuracy on the test data if the classifier has a low error on test data it means that ge the generalization is good but if, if uh, the classifier has a high error on the test data, it means that the generalization is good, is bad, and the learning has not been uh, done uh, with a, a good uh, situation. Okay? So, the criteria that is important for us for uh, saying which model to select, which classifier to select on a data, it is the generalization or the error or, or accuracy on the test data. Uh, as you know, error and accuracy are the opposite. For example, if, if we have uh, one percent error it means that we have 99 percent accuracy okay uh, and there are uh, two more concepts about the learning model so uh, one is underfitting underfitting what does underfitting mean underfitting means that sometimes we may select a model that is very simple and uh, it's not suitable for the data that we have. In this situation, the training is not done good because the model is not suitable. In this situation, we have underfitting. Underfitting, it means that we use a simple model, but the data that we have needs a more complex model. If we do that and select the simple model, we will have uh, underfitting. Okay, the learning model is not enough complex for the data. For example, the data that we have, it has a quadratic model, and we select a linear model. A linear model is more is simpler than a quadratic model if we use a linear model for a data that needs a quadratic model this is called underfitting and the second concept that we say here is overfitting overfitting is it occurs that uh, sometimes uh, we select a very complex model a complex model and the data has noise and the model uh, learns the noise okay what happens when the model or the classifier learns the noise as we said a uh, noise is a wrong data wrong data if uh, if the classifier learns the noise it means that the learning is not good uh, and what happens is like this the classifier has a good accuracy on training data and low accuracy on test data okay uh, thank you very much